let me let me take you back uh, about a hundred years. Um, this is uh, the famous case of Dodge v. Ford. This is he uh, Henry Ford over there, and the Michigan Supreme Court uh, famously admonishes Henry Ford by saying uh, a business corporation is organized and carried on primarily for the profits of the stockholders. Uh, the powers of the directors are to be employed for that end. Fast forward uh, about 100 years. Uh, this is uh, Leo Strine, uh, familiar to some of you in the audience, the Chief Justice of the Delaware Supreme Court, uh, which is to say he's like the god of corporate law these days, and if not god, then definitely pope, you know, god's representative on earth on, on, on these matters. And uh, he more than once, uh, this is a famous quote, he says that uh, directors must make stockholders welfare their sole end, and uh, that other interests may be taken into consideration only as a means of promoting stockholder welfare. Uh, so the law has been, at least in the United States, has been uh, pretty stable, but uh, just about the same time, uh, the Wall Street Journal ran uh, last year a major feature on Mark Benioff, the CEO of Salesforce, and he was quoted as saying that uh, in the 21st century, the most important thing to focus on uh, is to focus on uh, stakeholder value, not shareholder value. Your stakeholders are your employees, your customers, your partners, the environment, uh, the cons the communities uh, that you serve, the homeless people in your uh, cities where your offices are. Now, uh, the, the Wall Street Journal goes on uh, to say that Benioff is among uh, the CEOs of companies including Apple, Bank of America, Walt Disney, Intel, IBM, and IBM uh, that have begun pressuring lawmakers on social issues, often with a warning, uh, change laws or risk losing business. Now, now these, these are not corporate midgets, right? Uh, and, and one wonders, what were they thinking, uh, given uh, the clear uh, state of, of the law? And what we try to do in the paper is not to answer specifically what those guys were, uh, were thinking, but what board members in general could be thinking when they uh, uh, contemplate this fundamental issue. Uh, so this, the stakeholder versus shareholder uh, dilemma uh, has been a core issue, possibly the, the core issue of corporate governance uh, for years now. It's a subject of massive, several massive literatures that I will not review here, uh, often under the title, uh, sorry, uh, the, the, the objective of the corporation. We see uh, a, a common tension between a monist approach that focuses on shareholder wealth maximization this is a pluralist approach that calls for balancing or at least considering the interests of additional uh, stakeholder groups. Uh, just recently in this forum last year, Oliver Hart was discussing in a paper uh, joint with, with uh, Luigi Zingales uh, this very question and actually uh, suggesting that considering other share, uh, stakeholders could be beneficial uh, to, to everybody, including shareholders. Uh, our, lit, our paper relates to a growing uh, literature, a growing number of papers that show that personal uh, attributes of CEOs mostly uh, matter a great deal. And what studies have documented is that things like life experience, for instance, uh, exposure during childhood to some trauma like war, military service, or personality traits, particularly uh, narcissism uh, of CEOs, risk attitudes, in particular overconfidence, political attitudes, liberalism versus conservative uh, political beliefs. All these personal attributes matter for uh, corporate uh, strategy with regard to uh, corporate social responsibility in, in particular. But what's common to this entire literature is that they treat uh, researchers treat uh, CEOs or top, top managers as a black box. There's like an assumption that you cannot peek into their mind in figuring out or analyzing uh, these questions, so uh, they use indirect proxies, proxies. For instance, for narcissism, they ask whether the CEO's photo features on the financial statements, uh, they look at the political contributions that are documented in the United States, stuff like that. What we do is to peek into this black box, or at least try to, and, and beyond, look beyond uh, the black box. So our, our paper proceeds at two levels of analysis. At the individual level, 
we ask how uh, directors deal with a stakeholder, uh, stockholder uh, dilemma. And at the uh, societal or cultural or institutional level, we ask how societies uh, address this issue. And this is the level, the institutional level, is the level where law and finance and legal origins and legal uh, rights uh, play in. Very, very, very uh, brief background on values and, and culture. Uh, Psycho we, we draw on, on uh, a lot of literature in psychology that uh, talks about personal values. Values, psychologists define values as conceptions of the desirable. These are abstract ideas uh, and beliefs about what's good, what's right, what's le legitimate. And people have their own value preferences, uh, which they use to uh, analyze situations, uh, assess judgment, uh, sorry, assess actions. And, and other people, uh, values, value preferences uh, form pretty early in, in one's life. By uh, adolescence, when people are teenagers, their value preferences are pretty uh, much fully baked. Uh, value preferences have been shown to be recognized over the early childhood. Uh, values are probably linked to behavior causally. That is, people behave in a way that's consistent with their value preferences because of that, in addition to uh, multiple other sources, uh, causes, such as situational uh, factors and, and so on. Uh, we use a theory that was developed by Shalom Schwartz at Hebrew U uh, that defines 10 uh, value types that are universally recognized. That is, you could, in analyzing value preferences at the individual level, you, you observe the researchers have, have observed these 10 value types all over the world. In terms of culture, here again, uh, culture is conceptualized in psychology as the latent ex external normative system. This is like the something that external to the individual, that is at the societal or institutional level, that shapes or uh, constraints uh, actions and, 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 and institutional structures. Uh, this is what uh, is, is, refer, is referred to as informal institutions in the new institutional economic, uh, economics literature, North, Williamson, uh, and so on. The, the uh, common postulate in this literature is that societies, every society, needs to address certain basic issues, uh, informally that is, uh, when it comes to define social order, and different theories uh, differ by identifying those two, three, four basic issues. Our primary uh, theoretical framework was developed by Schwartz. That's a different uh, theory from this one. This is individual level. This is societal or cultural level. And Schwartz has defined three dimensions on which cultures, countries differ in terms of their uh, basic positions. The two important ones in, in this study are egalitarianism versus hierarchy, and this one, harmony versus mastery, that is somewhat less intuitive, I, I, I suspect, than egalitarianism versus hierarchy. Harmony stands for a cultural stance uh, that emphasizes uh, 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 stability, uh, fitting in with the environment, with the social environment, whereas mastery is uh, an ideal type culture that emphasizes development, change, assertive uh, change, uh, has been related to, to entrepreneurship. So you begin to, sorry, so you begin to see uh, the connection. This one is very important in general, but less so. In, in this study. There are alternative theories uh, that some of you have known or used. Uh, we consider them briefly uh, in, in the paper. We hypothesize at the individual level, uh, or ask at the individual level, is shareholderism universal? So here we draw, uh, Rene and I draw, on a joint paper with Lilach Sagiv, again from Hebrew U uh, at SMJ that used Swedish data uh, where we found that Swedish board members and CEO uh, uh, exhibit uh, a principal, nearly ideological stance on this dilemma or tension between shareholders and stakeholders that we uh, called shareholderism. So it's, it's a general view, stable, roughly stable view that where, where board members in general tend to side with shareholders, uh, others tend to uh, side with, uh, with uh, stakeholders, and, and this shareholderism uh, quality correlates with their personal values. So it, it correlates negatively with a value called universalism, with a generalized care for others, uh, for instance, uh, caring about uh, the environment and global warming and, and stuff, uh, and correlates positively with uh, values of power and, and achievement, and in tandem, uh, 
this shareholderism stands, this prefer general preference for shareholders over stakeholders, also correlates with a value called self-direction, which again, just feel intuitively what, what this means. Together, the, this value profile, uh, we argue, stands or reflects an entrepreneurial approach. So it's the combination of attaining uh, power and resources, openness to changes, actually seeking changes, and self-direction. This is like a typical Schumpeterian kind of entrepreneur. And people who are higher on the entrepreneurial values tend to be higher on shareholderism, siding with shareholders who, we argue, uh, stand for the inter more entrepreneurial or entrepreneurship-oriented constituency in, uh, in, in a business firm. All this takes place, all this massive variation actually takes place against a pretty stable, a pretty clear uh, legal environment, which in Sweden, uh, mind you, is shareholder wealth maximization, but it's fixed because these are only Swedish board members. There's no variation in the law, which is something that we're gonna introduce in, in this study. Uh, in terms of, uh, at the cultural level, we ask how does culture matter? And uh, we pretty much know from prior literature that countries matter for corporate governance. Here we focus on culture, we uh, make hypotheses about the Schwartz dimensions. We argue that board members will be more shareholders the less egalitarian their culture is. Uh, or positive, positively speaking, the more hierarchical the, uh, the culture is, uh, the more shareholders they are. Recall uh, Strine's perception that other stakeholders are at the service, or their interests are at the service for the purpose of uh, maximizing shareholder value. We also argue that shareholderism will correlate uh, negatively with harmony and positively with mastery. Again, with, with the idea, uh, consistent with the idea that this is a more dynamic cultural dimension uh, that's related to uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, we also look at uh, legal rights, shareholder rights, labor rights, uh, regulation of, uh, of, of entrepreneurship, about trust, uh, quickly about the methods. We have a sample of about a thousand uh, or so board members of public firms from all around the world's world. Uh, sorry, um, it's basically an um, international version or, or, or edition of the uh, Adam Slick and Sagiv, the Swedish study. Uh, we use an email-driven online survey in several languages. This is definitely not a representative sample uh, in, in any way, but uh, because, again, to perceive the results, we, we find very consistent results with the uh, Swedish study. Uh, we are not terribly concerned, but that, that's a limitation. Uh, we have nice groups from the US, UK, India, Israel, Germany, and uh, smaller numbers of uh, responses from uh, many other countries. In terms of shareholderism and corporate governance, we take a quasi-experimental approach, that is, we created vignettes, caselets, small stories that are based on seminal court cases from all around the world. There's a typo here, it's Dodge v. Ford. Uh, so we gave them a little story uh, that's based on Ford and focuses on consumers, uh, a, a, case based, a caselet based on Park versus Daily News, uh, focusing on employees, a uh, Canadian case focusing on creditors, Schlensky versus Wrigley on, on the community, and so on. And basically what we asked uh, the board members to do is to indicate how they would vote in a situation uh, like that. Now, the, the advantage of this approach is that these dilemmas are realistic. I mean, we, we did make them up, but we were inspired by real cases that, you know, board members were taken to court over their decisions in such cases. And as some of you may know, Courts have not decided them in any, in any consistent way. So there is, there is a tension here, there is a dilemma, a real dilemma uh, to, to speak of. Um, we use uh, standard measures in, in the psychological literature for uh, gauging uh, value preferences. I won't go into the details. A little bit of results. So the first question that we ask is, is shareholderism universal? universal? In the sense that do board members vary around the world? Do they vary or do, do their shareholderism position, uh, uh, does their shareholder position vary uh, 
in, in line with uh, their values, and we find that they do. So uh, we introduce country fixed effects for firm level and director level. We hold the country uh, uh, variation constant, and we indeed, indeed find in different specifications uh, a positive correlation with power, achievement, and self-direction. These are the entrepreneurial values. A negative correlation with universalism, that is opposite conceptually uh, with power in particular. So we can, we can actually argue that board members, regardless of their country of origin, address or approach the stakeholder, uh, stockholder dilemma in a similar way in, in light of the uh, personal uh, values. Okay, uh, this is where, uh, where culture uh, kicks in or introduced into the specifications. Bear in mind that uh, before we get into the institutional variables, throughout the specifications we uh, continue to observe the same correlations. So we actually see here or have, have evidence for factors operating at two levels, the individual level, the individual level, again, power, achievement, self-direction, uh, negative for universalism, reg in, in holding uh, or considering institutional uh, factors. We don't see any effect of uh, legal origin, none, none to speak of. We do observe very consistent uh, correlations, uh, theoretically consistent correlations uh, between one's shareholderism level and the culture uh, in which uh, the board member grew up. So we ask them what is the, to indicate the country in which they grew up, not necessarily the country in which they reside uh, today because, again, the formative period is childhood and, and, and uh, adolescence. Uh, so uh, see here there's a strong negative correlation with the egalitarianism, positive correlation with mastery, uh, respective correlations, uh, negative with harmony and positive with hierarchy. This is where re polar representatives of those dimensions are entered together. When we look at be beyond, in terms of legal variables, beyond uh, legal origin, which is insignificant, we don't find a negative uh, sign, uh, sorry, we don't find a significant sign for anti-self-dealing index which we take as a rough proxy for how important are shareholders in, in the eyes uh, of the legal system. So this is like, this is like a formal uh, proxy, the, an index of legal rights that considers the importance of, uh, of shareholders and, and there's nothing that we see. However, we, we do see uh, significant uh, signs for labor regulation this is, uh, this is to be expected, so social security is negatively uh, correlated with shareholderism, which goes hand in hand with a negative correlation with egalitarianism, but this is, this is interesting, because the higher the job security in the, again, and this is the job security in the firm country of uh, operation, so the more secure our jobs in the country where the firm operates, the more shareholders board members tend to be in addressing or approaching uh, those dilemmas, which is interesting because it, if, if, if you believe the result, suggests that board, board members are, if perhaps feel free to engage in strategic action that's more shareholderist, knowing that their employees are, are protected at some, at some basic level. This goes against uh, usual calls for liberalization or making the labor market more flexible in order to help uh, shareholders and firms. Uh, we don't find much uh, for trust. Uh, we do find something for uh, entry uh, procedure. But let me skip the, uh, the alternative theories and look at something that we, uh, that's not included in the version that I sent uh, the, the, the discussion, but just uh, did, did that recently. So we, we use uh, groupings of countries into cultural groups, cultural regions. This is something that Schwartz does and Engelhardt too does. This is, these are the uh, results from, from Schwartz. So, uh, countries can be grouped into cultural regions, and what we do here is we do uh, t-tests for the differences in the averages. These are the mean values of shareholderism in the cultural groups. Uh, focus on, on this uh, lower uh, uh, line here, row here. Uh, you can see that there's uh, significant differences between Western European uh, board members and English speaking, not common law but English-speaking uh, board members. So there's a significant difference, and we need to look at the uh, mean level. 
English-speaking board members or board members from English-speaking countries on average tend to be more shareholderist than Western European, uh, Western European directors. An interesting result uh, has to do with Far East uh, board members. This is pretty, mu pretty much the highest uh, group in terms of shareholderism, uh, average shareholderism, and you know, the, the groups for which we have a good number of, of responses. It's dominated by Indian uh, shareholders, not necessarily uh, Chinese, Korean, and, uh, <clears throat> and Japanese, but there are some of those. And consistent with the cultural makeup of Far Eastern countries that is high on hierarchy, very low, high on mastery, these are the, the, the dimensions that, cultural dimensions that correlate conceptually with, uh, with shareholderism, we indeed see that the Far Eastern group in, is uh, different, significantly, differs significantly uh, from both uh, English speaking and uh, Western European uh, directors. So to conclude, this is an early draft, you have to consider that. Uh, at the individual level, we find that universal, uh, we find universal relations between shareholderism and entrepreneurial and self-enhancement values. The law, notwithstanding, regardless of the law, uh, this, this relates to the, you know, the general observation that uh, personal attributes matter. At the cultural level, we find that egalitarianism and harmony link negatively with shareholderism, which again is, uh, is consistent with the idea that uh, countries matter, but it's, it's at least, it's culture at least as important uh, as, uh, as, as the law. Thank you. Thank you very much for the organizers and uh, to have me this uh, very interesting and important conference on corporate governance. And uh, I have to say, the one of the author, Ren Adams, we, we, we went uh, to the University of Chicago together. So it's very <laughs> great to feel good uh, to be here to discuss uh, uh, Mr. Richten and Adam's paper. The problem is that uh, by our education, uh, discussion, dis discussion have to be harsh. So, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> but you know. <laughs> now, um, well, this is the regulation we, 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 we saw. Shareholderism is, is a questionnaire based, online questionnaire based. Uh, uh, points of uh, each uh, director, the board member of board, uh, that is uh, regressed on individual value priorities, it's like individual traits, and then culture, it's more like country level culture index, and then institutions like uh, anti uh, self dealing and so on, and then errors. Obviously, when we see this regression, the, remember the title is shareholders and stakeholders around the world, the role of values and culture in directors' decisions. So that the, they try to ask whether the culture, uh, individual value or culture affecting on shareholderism. So they try to see this regression as more like causation from right to left, right? So obviously the question is whether there is a endogeneity or reverse causality in here. In that case, they should be, in that case, the result is not really the role of individual value and culture on the shareholderism, but it's more like just a correlation, association of the two. So, the, so my discussion mainly on where would be an endogeneity, could be, could be a reverse causality or endogeneity coming. The first, uh, by the way, the data, it's already pretty well uh, discussed, uh, uh, pretty explained, so I don't wanna go through it, but online survey about 900 farms from 50 countries. Uh, on, on this survey goes on shareholderism and value priorities. And shareholderism is a tendency towards shareholder value maximization by suppressing, I, I believe by suppressing other stakeholder values. And the survey using vignettes, as you see, a brief description of a legal case uh, showing a trade-off, clear trade-off 
between a shareholder value versus other stakeholder value, which, and asking which side do, do you start. And then value priority is individual traits, of benevolence, power, et cetera, et cetera. It's a, I'm not really an expert on this, but it looks like it's a standard 40 item version of so-called portrait values questionnaire. This is not really uh, invented by them, but it's more like standard stuff. Uh, what you mean by them is shareholderism. Anyway, so to what's the endogeneity? Uh, what, obviously, the first question is how the directors or member of boards are selected. Uh, maybe implicit or explicit selection criteria to become a director may match the director's trait. Okay, very benevolent, uh, like priest or monk type people. I don't think they would be become a <laughs> manager or director of a big financial industry companies, for example. So th that's one. So also, I do see there can be a industry specificity matters. For example, benevolence. Someone become a top of or a board of director of a medical drug company or the medical machine company may still think about some kind of medicine industry as a whole. Kind of looks like closer to medical doctor. Maybe more benevolent than compared to uh, in hedge funds or uh, you head of board member of UBS or Deutsche Bank or Goldman Sachs or whatever. So uh, even uh, I, I do probably there can be an industry specificity on there too when, when selecting uh, board members. Then uh, effects, what, what they found effect may stem from, uh, from industrial characteristics like industry specific growth and so on, um, rather than uh, director's traits per se. I don't know how, how, it's, how this noise goes on, but it's, there must be a noise. And then industry commercial but country matters too. Uh, that means, uh, well, something like industry level growth, or some, some, some kind of industry level control needed, I, I believe. And then when country matters, then the question, they do use country-specific culture values and institution values. Then that's where the next question, how culture or institution uh, matters. Um, well, first of all, they, they use home, can, uh, directors, home country, but, and companies in, in corporate country, uh, both they use, they, they consider, but anyway, the, uh, it, it, how this uh, matters? One, one, one question, whether this enter as a simple linear relationship, the first one. Um, well, again, different culture may select uh, different uh, individuals or directors as praising different value products, and at the same time, may select a degree of shareholderism. So that's both sides. And, uh, well, I didn't see the last slide inside the paper, so kind of one of my suggestions is already somewhat answered. It, it would be interesting to make country groups that share similar culture, and then see within, however, I would like to see within these uh, country groups whether the directors in the level still matters for sure. That's probably better, but one more step ahead, I, I would see. And then, again, as I said, similar problem arise from institutional variables, anti self dating, et cetera, the same question. And then, another one, they stand on, insist on these personal traits uh, already established, at least at, uh, before the teenager. Uh, age uh, before becoming adult. But uh, I'm still not so clear on that. Maybe this is not their own concern, but it's more like concern about uh, psychology or whatever. However, <coughs> wh 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 however, what do you think about MBA? And some of you, I believe, uh, many of you may be teaching MBAs, uh, and the, the teaching how important of uh, maximizing profits, how important to, uh, you know, make the bottom uh, meet. Uh, uh, I, I believe they should be 
should, should become more careful on making profits compared to before coming to business school. And otherwise, what you are teaching is a, is a question. So like benevolence uh, or shareholders should be somewhat affected by, by this uh, education and, uh, and trades too, I, I believe. Well, that was another question. So again, those countries that more like US standard uh, MBA is popular degree to become manager director, culture in common people may, may not matter. So which culture you are, you are talking about is the question. Uh, and also shareholders and, and individual value priorities should be more or less the same as those economic man in a country with maybe many US and MBAs. This may be actually the related to country group questions. What uh, English speaking country mean for example, is that the culture, or is this is be, or is it because more U.S., U.K., Anglo-Saxon standard MBA holders are there? That's that's, a, that's another question. Well, that's a, that's all endogeneity questions. And one more, yeah, that as I said, uh, those are the individual values. Their question is: Do individual values and 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 country culture matter for decision in farm? But, from both rooms. And the important question, but again, as I said, endogeneity exists theoretically. So my question, again, their question sh should be, at this moment, I would, I would say, should be changed to do share the individual values and country culture correct each other. However, this is a less important question. So they want to do more, or well, maybe stick to the, this, because I st maybe this is still an interesting question. But anyway, that's their choice uh, on, on this one. And then further thoughts, uh, or more like, uh, I have to say, advertisement, <laughs> what I'm doing, <laughs> either way. So the further thoughts, uh, is always trade-off. They, 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 they are saying there's a shareholderism, a stakeholderism, it's a trade-off. But uh, not so clear. There's a the specific cases that's showing trade-off, but it's in general I'm not really quite sure. For example, even think about uh, uh, farm value profit, farm profit versus uh, labor protection. My recent working paper by Stein, with Stein Glass and me, uh, some level of protecting employment is actually we, we found good for farm value. Uh, because if there's a farm specific investment needed, some protection, a basic protection of worker employment can induce them to invest in a farm specific, specific skill that enhance profitability of farms. So of course, it's as simple as non-linear. If you protect too much, obviously it's, it's bad, but at least the basic protection is good. It's kind of non-linear and also not always a trade-off. Then also long run is a more like a long run. This is a more typical sense. It's farm profits most, probably most important for keep works, keep jobs. But anyway, that's a more like typical, typical comment. And then also another thing yeah, here, we, it, it, the shareholder corporate, and we, we, and Ishe Yafe sitting over there, and me, and then <laughs> Ten Krasen had uh, some paper showing also uh, what is really important uh, in, in a profitability or efficiency actually in a farm investment. We found that shareholder corporate and shareholderism in a sense is important. While, uh, of course, I, we, our view is that creditor rights or the level of thinking about creditors are more a complement. But those no, substitute, but in a how, somewhat interestingly, creditor rights are not become an uh, important thing to enter. So that uh, in that sense, uh, even we see a variation of how the country or care about creditors, or how the company care about creditors, in the end doesn't really 
looks like affecting much on、uh, farm investment. So the further thought me is the thing is something maybe indeed affecting farm profits, but some values or something you can have a, can be a different、uh, view on it. I mean, board members can have a different view on it, but not so much maybe affecting farm profits. In that case, we shouldn't really so much care about those values. We, can, we are fine with diversity on that, but.、Uh, What is most important? Something like we, we have to think about what is most important in, for the farm to survive or farm to get profit. Well, already it's more like shareholders, but it's, that's one、uh, more like further thought to me.、Um, thank you. That's my end of my discussion. But anyway, it's a great paper, and I, 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 I want to see more you know, variation, a more version, better version or finer version. Future version. I want to expect to see. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Kenichi.、Uh, Maybe one. Why don't you come up to the front? Shall I respond to this now? Yeah. Why don't you come up to the front, though? Um. So. This is、uh, the, the Japanese version of being harsh. This, is, this was very, very, very polite,、uh, and thank you very much for these、uh, kind, kind comments.、Uh, very briefly to go over some, some of the major.、Uh, Points that that Kenichi made.、Uh, so yes, I mean, board members are not like the regular,、uh, the average person on on the street. And some un unpublished data that we have from the Swedish、uh, results from the Swedish data show that board members and CEO are higher on the、uh, shareholderist values、um, with regard, I mean, comparing with the with the average、uh, person. Or、uh, so there's every reason to believe that. That that holds for、uh, board members around around the world.、Uh, the point is that, and this refers to a number of a couple of points、uh, that Kenichi made, that the literature in psychology and organizational behavior shows that people don't quite change their value preferences、uh, during these educational and and socialization pro、uh, processes. What these processes do is actually serve for selection. So yeah, I, I fully agree that MBAs are educated, or like they go through a process that makes them more shareholders or more focused on on、uh, profit making.、Uh, but that's because、uh, that's because the more shareholderist one apply and and excel in those uh, programs uh, relative to others who go to the public service or or you know、uh, you know try to save the planet.、Um, <clears throat> Industrial composition—that's a good. It's good. It's a good point.、Uh, I think it's too remote. Again, there's some literature showing close correlations between cultural、uh, positions and the varieties of、uh, of capitalism、uh, measures. So it, this goes hand in hand. These are all informal institutions that, together, in a way, mold or shape.、Uh, Board members' preferences in in our study, in siding with shareholders relative、uh, to siding with with stakeholders. There's there's nothing dichotomous here. It's all relative to the alternative uh, position. Um, what hap the, what happens in reality? What happens in in the boardroom?、Uh, it's it's hard to say. Okay, uh,、um, uh, we take a quest we. Take a quasi-experimental approach. So, if, if you don't believe in the value of experiments, then this shouldn't impress you too much.、Uh, the problem with、uh, collecting data on actual decisions in, in, in boardrooms is that it's very difficult to come by, and it's extremely messy and extremely noisy. I would even argue it's it's unreliable. It's clearly the case, and again, the literature shows that people who act on on their values do so in also in light of other uh, situational uh, factors, you know, time pressure, things like that. But the value preference、uh, of of people also、uh, kicks in, and、uh, we we show some of this、uh, at least here in this、uh, in this study. Is there really、uh, a conflict between shareholderism and stakeholderism? Okay, this is the subject of the entire literature. Is is it doing good by doing well? That's one way、uh, to to phrase it.、Uh, we don't get into. We don't take a position 
on this uh, on this question. What we do show is that there is systemic variation on the way people address, board members address this dilemma that is closely correlated with their value uh, preferences profile and the cultural background that they come uh, with. To what extent they bring all this human capital and social capital in the, into the boardroom and how they interact with other board members who are also selected to, to fit into, into the group. Uh, that's yeah, further research. Uh, well, that's it for now. Questions? Uh, Curtis, you, you take control. Okay, I have a number of people on the queue. Um, please hold your hand up when I call on you so the people with the mic can find you. So, Horace, please. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Thank you, Amir, uh, for this very interesting paper. I just uh, wanted to refer you to one piece of the theoretical and empirical literature on CNO decision-making that you didn't cite, uh, at least I didn't see it, and that is a major work by uh, Stefan Schrader, a German scholar, uh, who published his habilitation thesis in 1995 under the title of Spitzenführungskräfte, Unternehmensstrategie und Unternehmensreform. Write that down. <laughs> Uh, that, 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 can, that, can be, that can be translated as business leaders, corporate strategy, and corporate success. Okay. So he, this scholar, died of cancer, unfortunately, at the end of the 1990s. He had data um, on the demographic characteristics and trades and cognitive trades of the CEOs of uh, the thousand largest U.S. corporations and also financial data with respect to these firms over a time period of, of seven years. And the things that he found basically uh, are two. First of all, uh, a clear causal nexus between the personality of the CEO and aspects of business strategy. And, and second, uh, compatibility between certain personality traits and the strategy pursued increases the success rate of the strategy that's being pursued. So I think that strand of literature, and especially that sort of work, fits nicely into the kind of story that you're telling. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, it's it's part, I should say, an unrecognized part in in, in this uh, oh, study in the large literature, really uh, large literature on uh, personal attributes. So thanks for the reference. Uh, Zen. First point is that uh, I think your paper uh, premised the uh, uh, stockholder uh, stockholder uh, shareholderism or stakeholderism is depends on the. Uh, personal belief of each uh, CEOs of board members. But I think the uh, other aspect of the uh, uh, interest of uh, CEOs in general, uh, that means if the, uh, the legal system allow them to do uh, uh, with the stakeholder uh, thinking, stakeholderism is allowed by legal system, uh, the uh, uh, CEO can uh, enjoy wider discretion. Uh, so the, uh, uh, I think, I, I understand the uh, CEOs of the uh, sales force says stakeholderism is important. That ch change the law of the uh, US uh, shareholder wealth maximization uh, law is understandable as the uh, interest of the CEO. That's uh, my first point. And second point is the, uh, uh, I think now the most Japanese CEOs and board members never says, we don't care shareholder interest. But 20 years ago, most of them openly declare, we never, we would never care a shareholder interest. That's a big change. But I was still wondering how they express and how they behave is not necessary same. So the, uh, uh, the most interesting result of your statistics is, the, for me, the more job security, more shareholderism. Uh, that's up opposite to my hypothesis, but I could uh, interpret it is the, uh, you know, Japan is the uh, uh, highest job security country. And the, uh, uh, even though Japanese CEO said, oh yes, uh, shareholder interest is the most important, but we, can, we cannot lay off 
uh, employees because of Japanese employment protection law. So uh, because of the uh, uh, job security, Japanese CEO can enjoy the wide discretion. Uh, so yeah, th that's, I, I, I got uh, the uh, interesting uh, impression from your paper. Thanks. Um, so ab about the legal system's uh, formal position on whether corporate law is shareholder-focused or stakeholder-focused, there is some variation. We mentioned it uh, in, in the text. Uh, we should deal with it more, f we, we try, we plan to deal with it more formally uh, in, in, in a future version. Uh, but, you know, for the time being, uh, a lot of people may tell you that common law systems are more shareholder oriented. We don't find this in, in the data. Uh, and, um, and also, if, if, you th if you believe that the uh, anti-self-dealing index is some somehow a proxy for the relative importance of shareholders, then again, the lack of significance suggests that, but there's more work to be done in, in, uh, in that direction. Uh, it's not only Japanese CEOs who, who don't make the mistake of coming out loud by saying, we don't care about, and then you could fill in anyone who, who want, uh, you, you want, uh, not, we don't care about these guys or the other guys. That's exactly what's striking about the Wall Street Journal feature on Mark Benioff and all the other pretty important CEOs that they feel secure enough in coming out and actually taking, taking action, not just making uh, uh, announcements, that is literally in contrast with the f what, what any law corporate lawyer would tell you uh, if, if Leo Strine has any importance in, in corporate law in the US, and he does, he does. You're gonna be mild in the one, Israeli way? Yes, I want to be harsh, uh, uh, not the, with the Japanese way. Um, no, I, I actually have uh, two comments. One is on the presentation and one is on the substance. On the presentation, if I understood correctly, you um, observed the same directors making six decisions, if I got this right, right? You present to all of them the same vignettes. So you could calculate for each director his own individual shareholder orientation or something like this, and then use this as the the most important dependent variable and regress this on a, a variety of characteristics, including values, including educational background, as Kenichi has said, um, country of origin and all of that, that would make it more sort of direct than showing the regressions the way you show them, I may, if I understood things correctly. And the, the other question is um, on what you think is the most important contribution of this. So is it about arguing that values matter, which is something that to some extent you and others have shown already? Or is it part of the debate on what the legal origin dummy variables mean in regression? So what do you think is the most important takeaway from these results? That was fairly benign, I thought. You're a good friend. Um, so um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure that I got your point about the presentation, so let's, let's discuss this uh, later on. What, what is the contribution of, uh, of this study? So we claim to make two contributions at uh, the individual level and the in cultural or institutional level. At the individual level, our paper joins, again, uh, a growing uh, literature, and what it does, uh, does present that's, that's novel is uh, first it peeks into the, what up till now has been assumed to be a black box. And uh, it does not use indirect proxies, but rather taps directly into using, you know, drawing on a lot of uh, uh, psychological literature on, on people's values. Why is that important? Because the literature that has looked at uh, CEOs and CFOs to some extent, uh, personal attributes, used indirect proxies that are very difficult to uh, use universally. They do not generalize uh, uh, well. So looking at uh, contributions to political parties, that works well in the United States beyond data availability because you have two major uh, parties that 
you know, map relatively well on, uh, you know, liberal versus conservative, but the literature in, in, in several fields actually questions uh, the sufficiency or, 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 or the appropriateness of this kind of liberal versus conservative, conservative uh, distinction uh, using, uh, you know, there's the, the, like a number of papers, uh, more than one, that look at uh, owning a private uh, f a pilot permit, a private f a flight permit. I mean, it may g work in the United States, where this could proxy for uh, uh, confidence or overconfidence, but this is not something that you could generalize uh, from. What we show in a, you know, not universal, but in a multi-country uh, sample, is that the same psychological factors work in the same way all around the world, holding the institutional, cultural, legal uh, factors uh, constant. Uh, at the institutional level, we, we try to make a contribution uh, about what is more, I don't know, I can't say more important because both are important. I can't say that law is not important. Uh, but what might affect board members' decisions uh, in strategic dilemmas, uh, it's, uh, it's clearly the informal, uh, institutional, and personal values more than the law. S stated otherwise, you can't tell board members what to do in this field. Uh, you have to educate them when they're children and to select them we well according to the strategy that you would like to pursue. Uh, something that we already mentioned in the uh, Swedish study paper and, and we uh, uh, mentioned here, uh, this suggests an alternative way to uh, uh, channeling or directing corporate strategy, uh, not by relying on legal rules, rules of conduct, by, but alternatively on regulating the makeup of the board. Uh, it's, it's not that we suggest that, you know, they should, board members should take tests uh, or the PVQ-40, but by fiddling, by playing, by uh, changing the makeup of, uh, of board members, again, assuming that they come to the board with a certain human capital, you could channel corporate strategy to, in a way that you think is, is, is desirable. We still have five people on the queue and very little time left, so Amir, you might want to keep that in mind. I'm going to group the questions. So next, uh, Dan, Merritt, and uh, Alexander. Yeah, thanks a lot for an interesting uh, paper. I just want to push you a bit on, um, on the, the sort of setup of the paper and the characterization of the law. Um, you kept on going back to Leo Strine, and, and nobody's going to argue that he's not important in the U.S. context, but um, there's an important difference between him and the Pope. Um, and, the, and the difference is that his um, uh, jurisdiction, or he's bound by jurisdiction, right? Um, and if you look around the world, of course, what, what you say about this narrow focus on shareholders um, doesn't really hold true almost in most other jurisdictions. You go to uh, the UK after 2006, um, India, uh, you go to Singapore, um, you go almost anywhere, and I think there's a ready, uh, a, a quite a clear observation um, in the law that it isn't really shareholder focused. Um, there's been an increasing recognition of, of it being stakeholder focused, and I think this is important for the setup of your paper because if you take it as a fact that you've had this incre increasing emergence of a, a wider variation of directors being able to focus on various stakeholders, then the law is not as out of whack with what you're finding than it, if it is this very narrow focus on shareholders. Uh, th th then more of this uh, variety of, of personality or, 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 or other characteristics uh, actually seems to make sense. So I think by characterizing in that way, you're, uh, maybe just to challenge you in this, it, it's sort of a bit of a straw man. The U.S. is the outlier, um, and the rest of the world has moved. I know you mentioned it a bit in your paper, but I'm just curious why you wouldn't put the standard view in a comparative paper up front, uh, rather than putting the U.S. outlier view up front and just uh, going over it quite quickly, uh, what I would consider the standard comparative view 
uh, buried in the paper. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, let, let, you're going to run. You can respond if you want, but you have many more people on the queue. Let's. Why don't we take a few questions and respond at once? I, I think this this one is okay, crucial. So I apologize to anybody. Uh, this one is really crucial. Yes, I mean we 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 do recognize that there's variability even within the common law. Uh, jurisdictions in, on, on this uh, issue uh, without going into the details of, you know, the Indian uh, recent uh, st uh, Corporate uh, Companies Act and so on. The point is not uh, about variation across countries. The point is that in a, a certain legal environment, a country-level legal environment, there's a huge variation among, uh, among board members. And the U.S. example is given for that purpose. I mean, given an arguably clear, arguably clear uh, uh, focus of the U.S. legal system, legal position, still you see important uh, board members and also board members in our sample varying quite a bit. Not the law, notwithstanding. Curtis, the next one. Yeah. I guess That law is not very important. Um, I, it's not surprising, and um, I think it's good to affirm it, that there are other factors that could lead people to vote one way or another for these six scenarios. But is your hypothesis that that's more important than law? Because if it is, I don't know that you've shown the the difference between the role that law plays versus um, the role that these values uh, play. I don't even know whether these six decisions uh, would be decided differently in different legal regimes. So, we actually, especially me, uh, we actually believe that law matters quite a bit, and we actually show results that law matters. What we are not able to show is that proxies of corporate law uh, matter. Other other laws, other legal regulations do do matter. In fact, this the the cross national variability allows us to test w the extent to which or which laws uh, matter more more than others. So we we don't hypothesize that law does not matter in any way. All right, thanks. Maybe I misunderstood the setup of the data, so I apologize. Uh, if you have individual level data for, for the directors, would you, you know, implementation issues leaving, uh, leaving aside those, would you hypothesize that shareholders react more positively upon appointment of a director with higher shareholderism? That would be an entirely different study. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure because because this goes to the fundamental question: what's better for shareholders and which shareholders? Like short-term activist shareholders may prefer a more shareholderist, you know, take no prisoners kind of kind of uh, board members, whereas long-term institutionals may prefer the more stakeholderist shareholder uh, board members because they realize that these guys are m more likely to. You know, adopt strategies that would benefit them in, in the long run. So I wouldn't hypothesize, yeah. and our paper does not speak to that issue. Yeah, I was hoping you would say that because that gives you a nice cross sectional test opportunities. That's right? true. That's true. Well, that's, well, there's more to be done. Okay, uh, last two questions uh, Francesca and Jeff. Um, so I. If you have a diffuse ownership uh, in a country with diffuse, mostly diffuse ownership, I can see what it means to be shareholderism or not. But as you move towards countries where you can have large controlling shareholders of family companies, which are perceived as extracting benefits of control, then what it means, shareholderism or not, is less clear. And I could give you two, even two different stories. You could have that generally it's perceived that at least some of the shareholders, the one with the largest stakes, get more than the fear of the return of capital. So you could argue, well, the equality is because the, sh the shareholders are getting more than the fair return, so you're trying to compensate. Or vice versa, you could argue, this, given that these are the 
board members elected by, let's say, the family or so on, they don't care about the shareholder value because that's not how the family is uh, um, getting most of their returns. So uh, what it looks to me is what you can get as different uh, attitude towards countries uh, could also be due to the fact that what is really the shareholder value and what the objectives of the various shareholders are a change. Absolutely. In, in the following that, you, you would expect shareholder structure, ownership structure, uh, to be relevant in, in, in this uh, dilemma without a clear hypothesis, because you could argue both ways about you know, controlling families and uh, dispersed uh, shareholdership. Um, we tried to address this using uh, novel data that we kindly got from Cliff Holderness. It's, this, this data is difficult to manage. Uh, we find something, but we're still in the process of, uh, of dealing with this. So yeah, basically it's an important factor, should be factored into the, uh, into the analyses. We're on it. So on uh, <laughs> scrutinizing uh, Leo Strine, um, I, I, I think he should be understood as making a positive statement, not a normative statement. And his is a statement not of law, but of governance and the distinction in an article that Ron just wrote, right? And so he says this with sadness, I think, that given the, uh, uh, the concentration of ownership and the activism, et cetera, in the United States, in effect, this is how directors who are accountable to shareholders in the voting system will behave as a descriptive matter, not a normative matter. So, so I think that's very important and probably you agree with that. But, but so, so that then leads to the question about, uh, I'm thinking about what would uh, shock your system. And, and it seems to me that cross-border events, uh, both changes in international Share, share ownership and indeed cross-border M&A would be good ways to test your story. So for example, in the UK, uh, the Kraft takeover of Cadbury was really um, an amazing event uh, because even though the UK had what was a nominally shareholder culture, when Kraft moved in on Cad Cadbury, they laid off employees, which was not the cultural expectation in the governance system, the shareholder governance system, very powerful sh shareholder governance system in the UK, but that was a national expectation rather than a cross firm within a national system expectation. And so it seems to me that the freedom, I mean that your system ought to be run against changes in international, and, and so one of the big issues in the UK now is the increasing degree of foreign ownership, which in effect changes the, on the strine dimension, the freedom of action that directors may have to prefer uh, the claims of, of other than the shareholders. And so it seems to me that these core structural facts of ownership ought to be integrated into your system to see what the residual uh, degree of culture on a director by director basis plays in the predicted degree of, of difference in outcome. So, so, so briefly, yeah, I actually agree with your uh, understanding of Leo Strine's uh, position, uh, but you know, he, he, he should take the law seriously, and we lawyers should take the law seriously, uh, and we would like to think that board members who are the addressees of the law uh, should take the law seriously, and what we show is that it's very difficult to make this, uh, this observation. So I, I, I agree with you on character, characterizing Strine, but I think you would agree with me that he does not think that the law is irrelevant. Whereas uh, what we suggest that whether it's irrelevant or not, there are many other factors that probably dominate uh, the role of the law. With regard to M&As, uh, absolutely, yeah. I, I, I fully agree. Um, what this paper tries to do is to provide systemic, systematic evidence, rigorous evidence to this, this notion going beyond anecdotes. Um, I have a paper with Jordan Siegel and Shalom Schwartz at JFE showing that indeed uh, there are more M&As the closer countries are on egalitarianism and M&As are more successful. Uh, in the long run, the closer the countries are, you know, uh, uh, 
of, of the two parties uh, on uh, on egalitarianism. Uh, so yeah, this this fits with the general layout uh, of, of this paper as well. Let's thank Amir.